Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a game meant to satisfy the tastes of any warrior. Whether you wish to cut your foes down with a mighty great sword, eliminate them from afar with a lethal bow, or silently suppress them with a dagger, The Elder Scrolls V will offer you dozens of weapons to pick from. Acquiring most blades or bows usually isn't a particularly complicated affair. Simply get to the right level and wait for a certain object to start spawning in inventories and crates. Or just up and craft it at a forge yourself, and you're good. Sure, there are some unique quest-locked items, but obtaining them is self-explanatory. However, Skyrim also boasts a small arsenal of hidden and unique weapons. Custom objects that only spawn in once, and aren't bestowed to you for completing a quest. These secret weapons, if you will, range in their power and backstory. Some are literal divine artifacts capable of one or two-shotting most foes. Others are useless instruments added in mostly as comedic little easter eggs. Nevertheless, I think they're all worth looking at. So, that's what we're gonna do today. Sit back and relax as we take a look at five more secret and unique weapons you may have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we have what has probably been the most requested sword of this entire series so far, Chilrend. This is a unique glass sword that can be found in a display case within the sewers beneath Riftweld Manor, Mercer Frey's home. While not a quest item, the only time we can actually go down here and gain access to this odd blade is during or after the Thieves Guild quest, The Pursuit in which we're sent to break into Mercer Frey's house and search for evidence of the man's suspected betrayal of the guild. Prior to then, the location will remain inaccessible. At least not without the aid of glitches or console commands, that is. There are a few things that make Chilren stand out as an especially desirable artifact. For one, despite being a glass one-handed sword, it's tinted blue rather than the standard green that we're used to seeing. Furthermore, it has some interesting stats. You see, there are actually six different versions of Chilrend that might spawn in, depending on what level you're at when you first enter Riftweld Manor. At its highest level, which will spawn in once you're level 46 or higher, it can deliver up to a mighty 16 points of base damage, versus the standard 12 we're normally used to seeing in glass swords. Furthermore, all versions of Chilrend have a special enchantment known to the game's files as Frostfeed, which enables it to deliver 30 points of frost damage per swing, and also gives it a tiny chance to paralyze foes with every blow. The combined stats and magical abilities of this item make it quite the force to be reckoned with, and some suspect that it may be based in Stolrim a special type of magical ice we don't actually get to see until the arrival of the Dragonborn DLC. Though unfortunately, while Chilrend absolutely has an interesting backstory we'll delve into, we can't actually be 100% sure of its origins and confirm that theory. The sword made its first appearance way back in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, where it could be given to the hero of Kavach as a reward by a farmer named Valus Odil for defending his farm from a goblin attack, and protecting both of his sons during the quest, The Killing Field. In Oblivion, Chilrend also appeared as a blue, rather than green, glass sword, and had some frost-based enchantments. Though, unfortunately, it was never explained how this sword came to be. The quest didn't enlighten us upon how it was forged, or how some random farmer got a hold of such a powerful item. It's also never clarified how the thing eventually ended up in Mercer Frey's hands all those years later. No matter its origins, Chilrend is certainly one of Tamriel's most interesting items. Next on our list is a cutter with admittedly a bit less character than Chilrend, though probably far less known to the average player. The Akaviri Sword. This is a unique variant of the standard blade sword we can find in the game that's going to require a bit of skill in the pickpocketing department in order to obtain. But first you're going to need to make your way up to the quest, The Prophet, early in the Dawnguard DLC. Like many of Dawnguard's quests, The Prophet can be played through from two different perspectives. That of the undead Volkahar vampires, or from the Dawnguard side. Nonetheless, the actual objectives of the mission largely remain the same. 
You see, in the quest, you're after an Imperial man named Dexian Evicus. He's a member of a rare organization known as the Moth Priests. Basically an order of men specially trained to read Elder Scrolls with the help of an insect known as Ancestor Moths, hence their names. Anyway, Dexian's been captured by a particularly crazed necromancer, and Dawnguard players will need to rescue him and bring him back to Fort Dawnguard, whereas Volkahar members will need to enthrall him and bring him back to Castle Volkahar. Both sides want to reveal what he knows so they can stop, or fulfill, some silly prophecy. But that's not what we're interested in today. The thing about Dexian we want to focus on are the contents of his inventory. For whatever reason, Dexian carries a special sword known as the Akaviri Sword. And the only way to obtain it is by pickpocketing him with the Misdirection perk, which allows you to pickpocket items that are equipped. Dexian is a permanently essential character, so murdering him to death and just looting is a no-go. You're going to have to use some sleight of hand here. But once obtained, the Akaviri sword is quite literally identical to a normal blade sword in every capacity. Statistically, visually, it's the same bloody item, the only difference is its name. That said, such a change in title may be indicative of a different backstory as well. The Blades are, of course, an ancient organization dedicated to defending the Dragonborn. Their origins are rooted thousands of years ago, way back during the First Era, when an army from the mysterious far eastern continent of Akavir invaded Tamriel. The invaders pushed as far as the Pale Pass on the border of Skyrim and Cyrodiil, before the Emperor, whom at the time was named Remen and a Dragonborn, was able to defeat them in battle using the power of his Dragon Shout. After hearing such a stunning voice, many of the Akaviri attackers bent the knee, and swore to serve this dragonborn emperor and his descendants for generations to come. Thus, the Blades were founded. This is why so much of the Blades kit seems to be based on more eastern models. They're from a faraway land. Of course, after taking up their new roles, the Blades continued producing new weapons and armor sets in the fashion of their Akaviri homeland. So, technically, any blade sword we see in Skyrim is at least loosely based on an Akaviri design. However, since the sword we loot from Dexian is called an Akaviri sword, could it be that this one is actually from Akavir itself? I.e. not forged by the blades in Tamriel, but actually brought over from the continent? Perhaps as a remnant from their invasion so long ago. Likely only Dexian knows, and Dexian refuses to tell us. Especially considering we stole it from him anyway. Coming in at number three is our first of two custom pickaxes. Meet Horfrost, a unique ancient Nordic pickaxe that can be obtained during the events of the Dragonborn DLC on Solstheim. Indeed, ancient Nordic pickaxes were actually introduced with Dragonborn and are essential to mining Stolrim a new resource used to make what are arguably some of the most powerful pieces of equipment in the game, depending on how you choose to enchant it. You might remember we just brought it up in regards to Chillrend. Anyway, Horfrost specifically, though, offers a special take on this new type of mining device. And getting it isn't tremendously complicated, though it will require some work. It belongs to Raelus Sidaris, a Dunmer miner who can be found excavating an old Nordic ruin on the island. He's an essential character, and the item can't be pickpocketed. At least, not when you first meet him. Raelus, while dedicated to discovering what secrets this ruin may hold, needs some help. So, we'll request that the Dragonborn pay him a rather large sum of gold so that he can hire more miners to continue the excavation promising to give you a generous portion of whatever profits he obtains. This begins the quest unearthed. Long story short, you'll need to give Mr. Sidaris money, wait a little while, come back, give him even more money, then do it again and come back, and the ruin will finally be dug up. But now Raelus will be nowhere to be found. After descending into the dungeon ourselves and hacking our way through an onslaught of Draugr and other creepy dungeon things, Raelus can be found possessed by an evil dragon priest named Azadol at the back of the dungeon, seemingly having just killed many of his fellow miners. After defeating Azadol himself and lifting the man from his curse, 
we'll have to decide whether or not we spare Rallis, under the understanding that he didn't really mean to hurt anyone and it wasn't actually him doing it, just Azadol's possession, or kill Rallis anyway. Regardless of which option you choose, now Horfrost can be obtained. If you spared him, he'll become available as a follower, and one can simply take the item from his inventory via trading. And if you kill him, well, then you can just take it from his remains. Aside from its name, Horfrost is unique in its enchantment, dealing 15 points of frost damage to both a target's health and their stamina, as well as introducing a small chance to freeze foes solid with every blow. Furthermore, there's a hidden effect that allows it to slow targets by 50 points for 3 seconds after each successful hit. This easily makes Horfrost the most powerful pickaxe in Skyrim. Though, admittedly, that's not saying a whole lot. It still deals a measly 5 points of base damage like all other ancient Nordic picks, making it only 1 point stronger than an Iron Dagger of all things. So, if you're looking for an item that helps you clear dungeons as effectively as possible, well, you should probably continue your search. But, if it's a collectible you're after, well, look no further. For fourth spot, allow me to introduce you to the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls. This unique, well, as you can probably guess, Steel Battle Axe can be found in Ironbind Barrow, laying right next to the dungeon's boss, Warlord Gathric. Its name describes the blade quite well, in fact. If a target hit by it dies within 5 seconds, then they'll fill a soul gem. Furthermore, the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls burns targets for 10 points of damage each second. Steel Battle Axes are already pretty powerful, so this can be an interesting tool to use, particularly early in the game. Unfortunately, unlike some of this video's other entries, we don't have a lot of information or even means to speculate on this object's backstory. Considering it's held in the main chamber of Warlord Gathric, a powerful Draugr boss, we can assume it was perhaps used by him or one of his men. That said, we don't know a whole lot about Warlord Gathric either, other than the fact that he's a very strong Draugr. Though, it is worth pointing out that he is uniquely a few feet taller than your average Draugr Deathlord, which is interesting to say the least. Perhaps Nords born that long ago were just taller or something. I don't know. Nonetheless, the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls is certainly a powerful item worth acquiring early in any playthrough. And finally, last on our list, we have a bit of a Skyrim classic that, believe it or not, I've never actually covered once on this channel. At the tippity top of the Throat of the World, the highest mountain in Tamriel, buried in some stone next to an ebony ore vein, players can find the Notched Pickaxe. Another unique, well, pickaxe that is aesthetically identical to a normal pick though does boast a custom enchantment, called Smithing Expertise, which raises your smithing skill by 5 points, and grants at least plus 5 shock damage to enemies, or even higher, depending on your enchanting skill and any perks you might have. While arguably the best pickaxe in the vanilla game, it surely isn't worth going out of your way to acquire, unless you really need every ounce of ore you can get your cube-shaped hands on and the item's existence is mostly a reference to Marcus Person, better known as Notch, the creator of Minecraft. Hilariously, over the past few days, Notch has actually been pretty active on Twitter, commenting about his experiences with Skyrim VR, so one can only hope that he gets his hands on his namesake weapon. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more of Skyrim's greatest secret bows, blades, and battle axes. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these items best suited your own fancy, and what object should we cover next? Be it a stealthy sword or a special piece of apparel? Leave your comments and suggestions down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.